I would say that Malik Willis is more than a than a might be good quarterback. I, I think given just what I saw in those two passes is that there's something more to that than just another quarterback. And that be prepared, him going number two to the Lions. Malik Willis pro day <clears throat> yesterday, and I believe it was Don Burr that right when we got on the air said uh, something to the effect of, "I've been hyping up Malik Willis for a long time," and. I just I feel like I always need to get this straight. I haven't been because I know what's going to happen, Dmac. If they don't take him at two, like say I don't know, Brad Holmes and the regime decide that's not their guy. If they don't take him at two, you know what's going to happen, right? People are going to take the social media, they'll take to here and say, "I told you, Neil. I told you." I'm not saying I'm not calling for them to take him. All I'm saying is this total dismissal. Didn't you say all along, if I heard you correctly, be prepared. Be prepared. Isn't that, isn't that your progress? Yeah. Be prepared. He's more in play than you think he is. That's it's fair. All, it's almost, your be prepared is almost like this would be the why they would choose him at two. So don't and that is be where, shocked. You, you've always said, I, every time I hear it, yeah, be prepared. I always qualify it. And, and, and I, but here's the thing with it, DMAC, and here's why. I don't want to say like it's a victory lap or anything like that I'm coming off his pro day because... You know who is who has had a bad pro day? No one ever in the history. Uh, Ojabo. Oh, David Oja. Uh, David Ojabo <laughs> had a bad pro day. Yeah, that was a bad pro day. But other than that, everybody else has had a good pro day. It's just for me, DMac. The why makes a whole hell of a lot of sense. And make no mistake, the game is moving towards that contractual flexibility is something that is valuable. As as you're watching on the YouTube channel right now, we picked out the highlights. The laser show that oh, was Malik Willis. That was sick. Yeah. <laughs> that the was laser sick. show. Anybody was watching, he rolled right. The acceleration, all of it. Came back left and threw it like 70 yards downfield in the air. Yeah. So, you know, again, I'm not saying that he's the pick. And if the Lions don't take him, it's the biggest mistake in the history of the franchise. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, if you're like, no, the quarterback stink, there's no way they're taking a quarterback. You're wrong. No. You're absolutely wrong. And I've given you the financial reasons as to why. Because a quarterback position is the biggest discount to market, maybe in professional sports. I a quarterback you're, you're, on a rookie contract. Well, we you hammer that down. You hammer that down of the why, the why, the why. So um, definitely. But the stuff that happened yesterday at the pro day, um, there's nothing that happened – because uh, Brad Holmes and his regime had Malik Willis at the Senior Bowl and stuff like this, there's nothing they don't know that he can't do. So this was just for you. <laughs> it was for my this entertainment. Is for your viewing pleasure, <laughs> Mister. I don't watch TV, but oh my god, my favorite show is Malik Willis Pro Day. I'll re- rewatch it and stuff like that. But no, I think Neil, to be serious, is that you're explaining the why. And so if, like some people. Because that's, you know, we did it yesterday. There's a split on whether he is or he's not. But the question is, is he the guy for the job? Is he the right guy for the job for what you're trying to do here in Detroit moving forward? And that's only up to, again, Brad Holmes. And, 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 and here's, here's my thing with it, too. And this is going to sound funny to hear. Because I think a lot of the people that just that just crap on the thought of the Lions being in play to take Malik Willis at two. They're like, you know, I've noticed from what I've seen, a lot of those people are Kyle Hamilton people. They want the quote unquote sure thing, right? Uh, what I'm saying is it's all a gamble, right? It's Kyle Hamilton is a gamble. Malik Willis is a gamble. And for me, it just comes back to the one principle. I'm not interested in paying a safety Nine and a half to ten million dollars a year when the best one in the game just got fifteen. As opposed to it's a gamble to take Malik Willis and pay him nine and a half million dollars a year to where the best in the game, Aaron Rodgers, is getting fifty million dollars a year. You see what I'm saying? That's that's my why. That's my why. And it's a factor. It's not just talent, guys. It's not just talent. It's not just predictability because it's all a gamble. It's not just talent. The finances come into play too. They do, guys. I'm sorry. The finances come into play too. They do. They have to, because we've talked about it all along. How are you going to build your team through the draft? Which means having a quarterback that's under a first contract 
like other teams who are successful and put it in. So what you're telling me, Neil, is that you'd ra- that to draft the quarterback to put him under the contract, then it enables you to have more salary cap to spend like $15 million on a safety. Well, but there's even that. Like, DMAC, if you got a quarterback at $9 million a year, $9.5 million a year, you could take one conceivably in the first round, and this won't happen, obviously, guys, but I'm giving you what the math is. You could take one in the first round for the next five years in a row and still be paying less than what the Packers pay Aaron Rodgers That's to true. the position. That's, That's math. Well, the, I think the whole Aaron Rodgers and the whole quarterback, what you wanted to play is just so you're not in the position like you see the Packers in right now or different teams. You'd rather be in a San Diego uh, uh, position or a L.A. Chargers position uh, right where they're they have their rookie quarterback under contract and now they're making trades and putting pieces together around him that's sort of you know not the Cincinnati way is you have to get lucky to have a first overall and draft that quarterback that you know is we're not in that position so it's more of it's more of the guess just like Justin Herbert was for the Chargers so this is more of uh, to me it seems like if you're going to build it this way you're going to try to build it the Chargers way if He's your guy. If he's your guy. If he's your guy. If you were Brad Holmes, do you pick Malik Willis too? Here and here's why here's why I would I would endorse that and I'm here for it. Number one, it's the financials right. of what we talked about. So who are you gonna gamble on? That's that's what it is. If you're gonna gamble, who where are your chips and where are you gonna gamble on? And this is where the GMs come into play. Now, you know, there, there's still things in play. You know, about some team, absolutely, who... See, I, when I made the point about, I don't think... I think the Lions already knew everything they saw. Well, there, I think some other teams yesterday are sitting in their sitting in their camps today going, man, that Malik Willis Pro Day, you know, what do we got to do? And maybe there's conversations about moving into a trade, right? You know what I'm saying? So so I think that Brad Holmes has a A plan and then a contingency plan and, and something this, but... The one thing that I do feel is that I, that, like you, nothing's changed. To so nothing should have changed to whether they're going to go defensive end, quarterback, safety, whatever else, right? But what has changed is the opinions of maybe other teams. Yeah, and that's and look, guys, I I understand it. And Doughboy Steve, we can draft a might be good quarterback any year. I would say that Malik Willis is more than a than a might be good quarterback. I, I think given just the what I saw in those two passes is that there's something more to that than just another quarterback. And that and right? so, the thing so the thing that like, sells me on him is his ability to run the football. We haven't had that. Right. We've never we've never had that here. No, and well, Sweet, you, 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 Mikey you McMahon? haven't even gotten to presenting what this guy presents as an asset to that. Right where you you've never had that. So again, as that being one of his big assets is his is his running ability. To right? me, yes. the fact is to this team with the offensive line, the running backs. You know where we say that it, with this offensive line, it doesn't matter who you you put Netflix back there, and he runs for four and a half five yards a carry. Well, I'd like a with a running mobile quarterback, a big Haas offensive line. So maybe. If you're looking to check a category, because of that, it fits more of the Lions, which you saying that, lean towards, be prepared, him going number two to the Lions. He, and here's, I think this sums it up pretty well for me. Malik has the ability. It's about consistency. That's a good thing. It's not like you're trying to take a guy who doesn't have it. You're trying to make have it. And, you know, I know for me, again, Hutchinson is a gamble to me, man. He is. Malik Willis is a gamble. He is. I understand that. There are no "quote unquote" sure things in this draft. The next year, those quarterbacks that everyone is well, saying, you know, Bryce Young is a gamble. Everyone, C.J. Stroud is a gamble. To whereas I would say, go through the lineage of the Ohio State quarterbacks. Point out, point out the good ones to me. I'll wait. Here's the whole thing, right? Is also too where it comes back to Brad Holmes, and you know they are looking at the quarterbacks coming out next year and stuff like this. My interest would be where did they have Spencer uh, Rattler last year? Where did they have you know the Kenny Pickett? Where 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 were they going in? You never know where they somebody somebody had to have an eye on Malik Willis during the year or or, or popped out. So that's the conversation, 
right? Who, who's the, so, and I, I bring this up because the Spencer Rattler, who's supposed to be the number one pick and all this stuff, if your team, that to, to me, that's a, let, let's just say Urban Meyer would have got caught on that hype train, right? From what we're hearing about all the stuff of Urban Meyer not knowing about the NFL, not knowing who Aaron Donald was, anything, you know what I'm saying? Like just the hype train. I don't feel that the hype train will ever get to this front office. It's not about that. The hype comes in, they see it, and you know what I'm saying? You yeah, know what and, I'm saying? and guys, may, you know, as I, as I look at what you guys are saying, I'm not saying die on the hill to draft the guy. I'm team move back. Be prepared. How much can we put a be prepared? I need a flashing be prepared for this to happen when Neil talks there, about this. There is a possibility. Because if you can't listen. Again, I'm not prepared to die on the hill. I am team move back because I'm team rookie contract. And I'll take the most rookie contracts I oh, can get. Oh, absolutely. Imagine you can move back to Jets or Giants or whatever. And Steelers, get whoever. Hamilton. And I'll, I'll go below, right. I'll go below go book down, value. Right. If you move down, where, where, because of the money and stuff like this or whatever, what's an acceptable position for Kyle Hamilton? Like the trade, because because that would be the dra- trade. I, I think I think you got to get to the double digits where it gets down to like five five ish million a year. Okay. And guys, this this is a factor. Like, let's not pretend that it's not. It is. I know that as Robert said, I'm not using my high school calculus teacher voice right now. The money's a factor. Brad Holmes is going. Mark Brunel. You like any of these guys or whatever like this? And and the, like these are the discussions where I get back to all of this has been apparent to the Lions for a long time and because of the senior bowl operations, because of all that stuff. So it's just be confident no matter who it is, no matter who you want. Or whatever, we all you get have to, to the be same confident route. in yeah. that they choose the right for all these reasons. We, I think, And I know it's weird because that's how, how good teams operate. But you know what? They're slowly but surely. I, it's a different regime, but they're operating differently. So allow them to. 